So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys again about the Rube's Polisher. Uh, we were filming the video yesterday for the hood. We were polishing the hood of this BMW and restored the finish using the Rube's Polisher. But I wanted to talk to you guys about some more stuff about the Rube's, maybe go a little bit in depth, uh, and also talk about removing this pinstripe because this BMW has this pinstripe that somebody painted on here and it looks like junk, so I don't like it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. Uh, now, I'm gonna show you how to polish this area. So I went ahead and did some modifications to my Rube's machine and I'm gonna go ahead and go through the steps I'd use to do this. So first, uh, I've already washed the surface, but I got a lot of dust on it from compounding uh, the vehicle earlier because we're using a heavy compound. So I'm gonna first go ahead and clean the surface. I'm gonna wipe it down with some quick detail spray. Now, uh, you might notice that I'm out here in the sun today. Uh, that's okay, uh, it's, not, it's a little light overcast. It's not really uh, very hot out here. I'm kinda wearing this cool baseball shirt, but it's good enough to be able to start polishing uh, my paint's not blazing hot, it's just a little bit warm from the sun, uh, but it's good enough to be outside today. I don't really want to be inside today. Uh, it's really nice weather out here, and uh, we were inside all day yesterday, and I really wanted to get some sun. So I'm going to first also go ahead and clay bar the surface. I got some medium clay. I put it in one of these extra little wax uh, jars that we had sitting around. Uh, so I like to keep the clay in there. And I'm going to use a little bit of detail spray, and I'm going to clay the surface. I already clayed the surface on this car like a few weeks ago. So I'm honestly just going over the surface just to pick up any residual contamination that might be stuck on the paint. I think someone's car is getting stolen in the background. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we're still picking up some contamination, so uh, glad I went ahead and did this. Sometimes you need to just put a little extra time into clay barring the car to get good results. Okay. Even though it's uh, not that sunny out here, this black paint does get really hot very quickly. So you want to make sure that you're in a shaded area or somewhere where it's kind of cool. If it gets too hot, we'll move the car into the shade. Uh, but it's a little overcast today, the, sun, the shade and the sun keeps coming and going. So we'll, uh, we'll keep working in this spot for now. Okay, so now that I'm clayed, I'm going to go ahead and start the roof's polisher. So let me go ahead and grab my roof's polisher and then we'll come back and talk about it in a moment. Okay, so I got the Bigfoot all plugged in and ready to go. This is the LHR 21 ES, the 21 millimeter throw model. Uh, I use, I'm using this because I want that really big throw. Now the big throw of this dual action polisher feels like no other polisher out there. It's very, very smooth. And if you know how to use it right, it has a good cut, but it has amazing finishing capabilities. So that's why I chose it to use on this Jetpack black paint. Now we brought this in the shade because it was getting really hot out there and uh, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't cooking the paint uh, with the polish. So the paint cooled down a little bit, so we're ready to start polishing. That's something you, if you polish outside, you're gonna have to move the car around in the shade and the sun a lot. Now I went ahead and made a modification to the LHR 21 ES and I placed the five inch backing plate on this machine. The five inch backing plate uh, really helps the machine uh, run very smooth. And that's something that I really like about uh, the LHR 21 is that I have a big throw, uh, but I have the five inch backing plate and I can use it on smaller panels like this. Plus it's a dual action, so I, I don't have to really uh, worry as much about burning uh, my lines and my body lines. So I'm going to go ahead and first tape up this light really quick. Uh, so I got some blue painters tape. Now I'm just going to do that so it makes my life easy when I'm polishing. Okay. Always remember to tape up lights or things like that when you're polishing. It really makes cleaning up a lot easier. There we go. Now let's uh, let's search the polishing. So I'm going to use our five and a half inch uh, orange black ops microfiber cutting pads. These are a really cool pad. Uh, we've used this one a while, so it's uh, it's not a brand new pad, but it's good to go. Loud airplane here today. So I'm going to take the pad. And I'm going to throw it right on the 21, and it fits just perfect. Get that nice throw. There we go. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and use V32 to cut this. Um, 
you know, we were using V34 the other day, but I'm, I was getting really good res results uh, on some of the heavier defects with the V32. So I'm gonna use the V32 on this. Uh, and I just really like the, the results it gives. So there we go. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give two sprays a detail spray. You can use water or you can use a pad conditioner as well. So I'm gonna first go ahead and spread out the polish right here. Let's get going. I'm gonna spread out on speed setting one. And I'm gonna go to straight speed setting six. Now also I wanted to tell you guys my goal is to remove this pinstripe right here. And you notice it's cutting out the pinstripe really well. Uh, my goal is to get rid of that pinstripe because I don't like it and it's aftermarket and somebody put it there. So I'm gonna try and get it off right now. Okay, I finished my cutting on that section and I'm liking the results. Uh, I'm removing that pinstripe, which is doing really good. Uh, I'm getting a lot of dusting, but the dusting is because V32 is a very heavy compound and that's the only one in the V-line that dusts. It's a low dusting compound, but still uh, we're using a lot with the, uh, with the dual action polisher. So I'm gonna keep going and trying to remove this pinstripe. I'll go ahead and try and take it off as we go. I know there's like pinstripe remover tools that they have out there uh, to get the job done, but uh, I don't really like using those. I'd rather just use a uh, polish and the microfiber does a great job of taking it off. So let's move my way down the panel and make sure that we remove that.
Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off any excess polish. You notice since we're using a compound that our polishing passes are really short. We make our pass, the compound uh, does its job, and then we move on to the next spot. I'm removing the pinstripe as you go, so we're moving up here. Little by little, it's taking it off. Okay, let's go and wipe off and polish. Now, I'm do it's doing a great job of taking off this pinstripe. It's gently taking it off. We're not taking off too much paint. If your microfiber uh, uh, pad gets kind of pushed down by using too much polish, mine, I'm using just the right amount, so mine's not really getting pushed down. Take your fingers or a brush, kind of agitate and fluff up the microfibers. Mine's in really good. You can also kind of take the machine, put it on a little bit, and take your fingers like that a little bit. Uh, I have a brush that I usually use. Uh, I'm actually using a pad cleaner, so when my pad gets dirty, I go in and clean it and come back out. Uh, but my pad's looking good, so let's keep moving on. Five dots, two sprays. Now let's try to move this last section over here.
Okay, now I have a little bit last piece up here. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off any type of polish. We got a lot of dust here from our heavy compound. Uh, but I have one little last spot up here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit more polish and then uh, we'll check it out. I'm only gonna use a little bit of polish for this section, make it a little, just a little bit better. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe all the dust off. I'm gonna get ready, I'm gonna swap pads, and then we're gonna move on to our next step, which is gonna be the polishing, refining the finish. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I finished up my compounding of this um, fender here. I removed the pinstripe, which is really good. I'm getting really good correction on this black paint. I don't think this black paint's ever been polished. Uh, it's pretty bad, it's from 2002, but I measured the whole paint before I started, and it was like an average of like 130, 125 on this fender. So I'm pretty good for polishing. I'm gonna remove my, uh, my cutting microfiber pad. Now, I, the, the Chemical Guys microfiber pads work very well with the Roots machine. Uh, they build up a lot of heat. I can even feel the heat generated by this machine because with polishing, friction is generated. And as you know from like school science, as friction is created, heat is developed as well. Uh, but the, the Roots does a very good job of dealing with the heat. Uh, it's got holes in the backing plate. Even though this is a smaller backing plate, it still works uh, extremely well. And I like it for the smaller surfaces. So if you buy a Roops 21, uh, LHR 21 ES, and you throw on the five millimeter, or the uh, five and a half inch backing plate uh, from the 15 model, it still works uh, really great. Awesome, awesome product. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and throw on my cutting pad, or my polishing pad. So this is a, uh, a Black Ops microfiber polishing pad. You notice that the microfiber is kind of an uneven uh, weave, and that actually makes it so the microfiber gives a smoother cut. It makes sure that it cuts the paint a little bit better than a foam pad, and it refines the finish and holds the product a little bit better. So I'm gonna throw this on the machine, and we'll go ahead and get started right now. There we go. Now you notice that the microfiber nap on our black optics microfiber pads are extremely long and they're uneven, and that's to give a nice smooth cut on the surface. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use V36 for this. Um, I'm using V36 to polish it out because you need a little bit more abrasive polish uh, when polishing with the roots. It, it doesn't really work well with a extra fine polish. It works a little bit better with a cutting polish. So I'm gonna use a cutting polish. Once again, I'm gonna start on this side and work my way to the front. Go ahead and do this. I'm gonna start on speed setting one and move my way around.
want to grab another microfiber towel. Uh, this is a fresh one. It's not the one we're using from compounding. There we go. Now, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but it brought back all that gloss. Any type of uh, marks that were from compounding, we got that gloss right back. The true gloss comes from polishing. It doesn't matter really what wax or what sealant or anything. It comes from polishing. If you want to know how to achieve a high gloss finish, it's with a machine polisher. Uh, we're using the Roops today, but this will work with a porter cable. It'll work with a flex dual action. It'll work with a rotary. If you have the skill for a rotary, I recommend it. It's a very quick and easy machine. But we're going to keep polishing this up uh, using this polisher and use our V36. I have our whole V-line here or uh, some of the V-line of V32, which you're using. Also our V38, the v 38s working good with this, but I noticed that the combo for this car is V32 and V36. It's just a great, great combo. Uh, I was using V34 and V36, but I noticed that the V32 just starts cutting a lot more um, and make sure that I get that finish I want. So I'm gonna keep polishing the side of the car and uh, you should keep watching and uh, maybe learning to improve your technique too. Go ahead and wipe it off. I'm really like, you, you notice how we're polishing here? The V36 doesn't have any dust at all. Uh, this is all dust from the compound uh, because V36 is designed to be uh, dustless. V32 is the only one that really dusts in the V-line, but it's a low dust formula.
Okay, if some of you guys are asking about there about uh, my arm speed or about the machine speed, uh, I have to move a little bit differently on panels like this. It's not like a hood where I'm moving in a, in a perfect grid because this panel is different sized from here to here and there's body lines. I'm also not really concerned about burning body lines with this machine. This machine is very safe for going over body lines. It's just like the Porter Cable. You don't want to ride them too hard, but you can still go over the body lines. Uh, with a rotary, you don't you want to stay away from body lines 100%. But the cool thing about the Roops is it's safe for the paint. You don't have to worry about burning it because it's a dual action machine. It spins this way, okay, but it also has a dual action. And the 21 they're talking about is referring to the throw. So it's 21 millimeters throw completely. That's what I like about it. Okay, I'm going to move down on the ground to my last area on this side. Now I'm not really, this uh, also right here, this E39 is actually an E39 Sport model and they have painted trim. This trim is usually plastic. So uh, it's painted, I can, I'm just gonna polish over just like I would normally. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and start doing on this side what I also did on the other side of the car. On the other side of the car, we polished it out, we washed it, clayed it, and then refined it with two-step polish. I'm going to do the same side on this uh, so we can show you guys how to use the machine a little bit more. So this side's real dusty. I've already washed it, but in the process of it raining out here, we had to stop. So it started raining, that's why we stopped polishing, but I'm going to go ahead and clean this side a little bit with some detail spray, this pro detail spray. Pro Detail Spray can also be used as a waterless car wash as well. Uh, I'm not really con too concerned about scratching the side uh, because we're polishing it anyway, so I just want to remove all of the dirt and debris before we clay it. There we go. Okay. Dirt's all wiped off. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab some more clay. Got my clay here. We're using this clay earlier want a little tiny piece to start claying. Here we go. Now I clayed this car about two weeks ago I'm gonna say but I want to just make sure that I keep my car clayed before I keep starting because you can get contaminants just by sitting in the city environment or by a factory or by a railroad. We're under the airport here so that's really our main concern is that airplane fuel and the airplane contaminants that come off the aircraft. Okay, so we're getting some contamination off of our surface. The surface is really slick, but I'm just removing any uh, residual contamination. I like the clay bar uh, better than a clay block for this situation. It allows me to get into smaller areas. There we go. Now you notice we got some contamination on the bar. Uh, that's from simply just sitting outside. Put my clay away. I like this little little wax container that we have it in. It's so I can just pop the clay in this little cart and be on my way. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wipe off the detail spray and the clay lube. Now the cool thing is that's why I picked up Pro Detail Spray for this job because Pro Detail Spray. The P40 Detailer actually allows me to waterless wash. It uses a detail spray and use it as a clay lube. So it's a great uh, three-in-one product, really good. 
Now it's a little bit harder to see out here what we're doing because uh, the light is like overcast and we don't have that sun reflection. So the paint does look good in the sun or outside of the sun, but in reality, it looks really bad. Uh, so I'm gonna tape up this area again, this light. Uh, I'm not gonna tape up the trim because the trim is actually painted. So I wanna polish that too. So I'm only gonna tape up this light. Remember to tape up lights or plastics that you don't want uh, polished because it ensures that they don't get harmed. I'm using a standard blue painter's tape from the hardware store for this. Uh, green painter's tape works good too. Uh, personally, any, any even masking tape will work in a pinch. So if you just got masking tape, that'll work. Don't use duct tape. Duct tape's uh, not good for this. I'm gonna go grab the roof's polisher. We'll hook it up again and then we'll get started. See you in a moment. Okay, so once again, we're back with the roof's polisher. We're using the LHR 21 ES Bigfoot. And we're also using that with a five and a half our five inch backing plate. This is not the stock backing plate. It's a smaller backing plate so I can get in the smaller panels. Uh, I went ahead and cleaned my uh, Black Optics microfiber polishing pads and now they're clean and ready to go again. These pads clean very well with a pad cleaner so it's really easy to start going again. I'm gonna put it on the machine and we're gonna start polishing. I'm gonna grab my V32 optical grade cutting, or optical grade high, uh, extreme compound. I'm gonna shake it up. It's good to shake up the polish all the time before you start. Five dots. Two sprays to lubricate the surface. And I'm gonna start polishing right here. My goal is to remove the swirl scratches and oxidation and also to remove this hideous aftermarket pinstripe. So let's get it off. I'm gonna start on speed setting one to spread. I'm gonna go to speed setting six uh, to refine. Can we go ahead and wipe off any excess polish? There we go. And we're removing a lot of the swirls, oxidation, scratches, but we're removing that pinstripe, which is really making the car look a lot better. Once again, repeat the process. Five dots. Spray. Speed setting one. And let's, uh, let's get all over.
Okay, I'm gonna wipe off residual polish. You notice I'm just moving my way across the car little by little. There we go. Now, if, you, uh, if your pad is getting uh, the microfibers pushed down, go ahead and use a brush. I like to go ahead and just rub it with my finger or turn it down to speed setting one and kind of claw it. There we go. Fluffs up my microfibers a little bit, makes them all even. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving down. I probably got about two more passes, maybe do this section a little bit, and then that section. Okay, I got this section left. Uh, then I'm gonna go this right here and then I move down to my bottom part by the light. So we're making really good time. The Roops actually helps me correct pretty fast for a dual action polisher. Normally I'd have a rotary for this job, but great polisher, great Italian built machine. Stripes completely gone. Now let's remove the floral scratches. Polish that clean.
we go. Let's swipe off any last compound. We pulled off that pinstripe. That's what I'm really, really happy about. So let's wipe off the last bit of compound. We got one more spot to compound, and that's down on the ground. So let's go down on the ground and compound that spot. I like to sit on the ground when I compound uh, closer to the lower ports of the vehicle. Uh, just because sitting on a chair, I don't want to be hunched back a lot. Okay, now I'm going to do this part. I'm going to do this part and this part. The roops allows me to cover a bigger surface area, so I'm going to cut and cover this whole spot in one hit. Let's do it. Okay, last compounding spot. One thing I gotta say about polishing is uh, it's not something you rush at all. This is something you uh, take your time in. If you don't have patience, this will teach you patience. If you have patience, you will excel at paint correction by far. Uh, I'm not a person with a lot of patience, but uh, this taught me patience. Taught me to slow down and take a look at the problem. There we go. Now. I like the results we got. We still need to do our polishing step, which is going to be the V36. So I'm going to go grab some water. I'm going to take a break for a minute, and then we're going to come back and polish the rest of the fender. See you in a moment. Okay, so now I've already gone ahead and put my V36 on there. I've changed my pad, and we're going to go ahead and start finishing polishing out the rest of this uh, fender. So let's do this.
There we go. Great work time with my V36. I'm going to wipe it down. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to try and do this panel productively and uh, not waste any time. We're running out of daylight now. Uh, it's getting late. It's about 6 o'clock, so I want to keep on working through. Okay, spot up in the front, five dots, spray, polish. There we go.
beautiful finish. I'm gonna go down to the bottom area and pull this last corner. Once again, I'm gonna go down and get on my butt right on the ground. Go ahead and wipe off the surface. And I'm loving this result. You notice we restored that nice jet black look to the paintwork. And now we have a nice clear swirl free finish. It feels extremely smooth. Now all we need to do is top it with a wax. So if you guys have any more questions about Roops polishing using the Roops Bigfoot polisher, which is a great way to polish any type of paintwork without burning the paint and achieve fantastic results, you can check it out on our YouTube, our Facebook, or you can find all our Roofs products at chemicalguys.com.